What's up guys, my name is Reaper Meister, and today we are going to be discussing stage 1 of the Overwatch League. Okay, so starting off, I want to talk about viewership. Viewership is obviously important because it's the easiest way for us to judge how successful the league is, or any esport uh, by comparison is, just because obviously the more people watching it, the more people are interested in it, the more people willing to invest into it, both with time and other like merchandise type stuff. Anyway... Before the league even started, there was this worry that this was still a early eSport. They hadn't produced much in the way. They had Apex, which was pretty good, and Contenders up until the release of Overwatch League. And that garnered about, like, I want to say 20,000 maximum, maybe maybe more. I don't have the exact numbers for that. But it was very important that Overwatch League, with how huge of an investment it was, that it started strong. And people were worried because of preseason. Preseason didn't even have viewership numbers and it wasn't on Twitch. So that wasn't a good way to judge the success of the viewership. Luckily, Blizzard turned it around and first day was was hit out of the park. Forty or four hundred thousand viewers opening day, and for that whole weekend they kind of contained around two hundred thousand. And these are like these are huge numbers just for like starting the league. But even then it stabilized around ninety K. Which is pretty, like, on an average for 90k, even for, like, the below average matchups. And for the hypest matchups, we got up to somewhere around 150k maximum, I would say. And that's good. That's pretty good numbers. That's right up there with League of Legends, with their um, NALCS. Uh, other leagues in the league will get that. So, yeah, all those numbers add up to a good interaction, too. We see this with things like the studio audience in in-house. The audience is always great. They're always super hype. They bring their signs to show in the stream. And even on Twitter, you have good social interaction with everyone. Uh, Reddit's pretty good. I'm not, I don't use Reddit too much, but you can see the interaction even just visiting. So that's what the viewership leads to. And it is very important that it stays high or at least stays consistent. Now that we see where the consistent level is, they can grow from there or just work on developing that base. To add to that, they have... They're actually tested um, giving out league tokens for people that are watching the league. And that's just that good incentive to keep people coming back to the league. I got something like 20. So for the rumors are, this was never officially announced. The rumors are that they gave out the league tokens just one week, one random week in the stage. It was never formally announced. And I got around 20 league tokens just speaking anecdotally myself. It was not a week where I was watching every game, but I watched a good majority of the game. And that probably means you're getting around, like, two to three skins per stage. And yeah, that's five weeks, but that's not bad, considering the skins are, like, five dollars a piece. And overall, that just adds up to good incentive to keep people watching the league. And in terms of viewership, I think Overwatch League is pretty good. It's a good, especially for a starting eSport. Now looking at gameplay, this is probably where Overwatch as a game shined the most going into the Overwatch League. It was already clear that Overwatch is the type of game with huge skill curves and a huge ability for team play. We all knew this going in, but Overwatch League made it shine in a, in a new way. Nearly every team had a shining moment and a bunch of pros were able to flex their muscles on their favorite characters. Early on, there was a worry about four Overwatch... Four Overwatch, which is basically just uh, four O's were very common in the league, and that led to a four Overwatch meme. I don't know. I'll put it on screen so you guys understand what I'm saying. But basically, that turned into a non-problem just because, well, yes, there was a lot of four O's early on, and arguably the best teams against the worst teams are easy four O's. They really developed into good matches. Even some 4-0s never really told the full story. Every match was at least somewhat competitive. Even Shanghai Dragons, who placed the worst, didn't get a single match win, were able to take maps that did matter in the end. They did matter when it came to playoff time. And that's huge. That's that sign of good competition in the league. Along with that, even though we definitely uh, entered the league in a mercy meta we all knew mercy was very top tier and she was very much in a way the best support it wasn't like that stifled what we saw in the league we still saw nearly every hero receive playtime symmetra is literally the only hero at a zero percent pick rate and that's more on the devs than the league and the players but we saw may strats we saw 
dive very much become the best strategy but even with dive being the best strategy we also saw counter dive develop from that we saw the orisa hog setups that people were using and yes everyone used mercy but the developing strategies to counter other strategies is what makes a fun game to watch and some teams were even better at one strategy versus another phil philadelphia was well considered one of the best dive teams Meanwhile, Houston had one of the best counter dive teams because they had the best Junkrat, whereas Philly had the best, uh, arguably the best uh, Genji and one of the best Tracers in the league in Carpe and Shadowburn. But that's that type of development is good for gameplay. It makes it interesting to watch. You weren't just seeing the same comps over and over again, although arguably you have heroes with more pick rate. That is obviously going to happen. And we also saw some niche strats. We saw Quad Tank come out at least once or twice with Lucio, Moira, it, they weren't really nearly that effective in this comp, in this um, meta, but seeing it tried shows the the willingness from the players to try new strats, and that's good. That means stage two will have a lot of variety going into it. And aside from that, we saw Ryu J. Hong still try his Ana. We, we saw a bunch of, of teams experimenting with their players to fit different team comps, and that's interesting. That That's what I mean by the variety we see from gameplay and the ability for team play in Overwatch. And that's essential. So overall, I think gameplay is where Overwatch shines the most as an eSport and the players bring that out in strides. Next up, we move on to production. And this is where we become a full-on Blizzard shell. They hit it out of the park with this one. Blizzard and the Overwatch League team were able to give, a, give us a top-tier stream, amazing venue. The production was out of this world it's absolutely one of the best in esports topped probably only by riot and uh cs obviously with their majors their majors are insane too and yes all these all the um overwatch league events are held in the blizzard arena for now we don't know what the uh future holds for that because obviously they plan to go to different venues but this is a stage one review anyway so for the blizzard arena it was nuts to see i can't wait to go in person i'll be going sometime for stage two maybe for the finals who knows but from what I've heard and the Instagram pictures and just personal accounts, it's amazing. It's a great experience, and I can't wait to go. Going to NALCS is one of my favorite things to do, so I'm sure I'll love Overwatch League Live. Anyway, the stream itself is also quality. They're always on time with their matches. They make sure to put plenty of things for you to watch. Things like the um, recap show and stage walkouts, things like that are incredible for not only filling time, but also giving good recaps for people that can't watch every match because obviously not everyone can but those are great while we're on the topic of of casters and recap shows let's talk about the casters and the analyst desk i don't want to single any one of them out but they overall as a team they did their job well the analyst was always amazing the casters always did a good job i i have a little bit to say in the critique section of this video but for what they were doing it was great they had good developments for storylines which I, I personally believe that storylines is what make esports what they are. So it's all about the casters and it's all up to the casters and the analysts to develop these storylines. And I think they did great. And for the gameplay, they also did a good job breaking it down, especially things on shows like the recap show. They do a great job breaking down those game the gameplay and just the plans for some of these teams. Stage playoffs was also a surprising success, generating Lots of hype, and honestly, this is probably what surprised me the most, just because it's basically a glorified money match. It's, it has no effect on the standings, and the winner just walks away with 100k, but they managed to make, make it hype enough for people to come back and watch it, and people to care about who wins the stage, just the stage, and that was surprising. It was good on them for doing that. Along with that, the casters also did a good job giving credit to all players. There was a huge worry that it would be just DPS getting all the credit. That's what early Overwatch kind of showed. It was easy to pick out the DPS and say, oh, he has great aim or he has good tracking. It's much harder to look at the tanks and supports and see where their role is and what they're doing to benefit their team. But, especially with the Overwatch League, the casters and analysts became much better at that. Uh, support players like Jonak and Ryu J. Hong were widely considered some of the best players in the world. Not just supports, players. And then tanks like Cool Mat, Muma, uh, I know I just showed my Outlaws bias, but Gamsu, uh, all the other um, Korean tanks all did a really good job and they showed great promise. And this was something that the casters were able to bring out and they were able to sh give them the credit they deserve. 
Finally, the team also did a good job bringing out the character from their players. They made them people and not just competitors. And this is important because in esports, especially when you're bringing in 12 teams with no previous branding and just t entirely new lineups that not everyone has identified with. I know some people knew like Lunatic High and some people knew um, like the Team USA that became most of the outlaws. But overall, like you're trying to bring in a lot of of hype over just the players themselves and for the most part the team was able to do that things like on stage moments for example profit flipping off uh the camera sure he got fined for that but that's huge for developing his character as a person uh, as a person to the audience and a lot of people latched onto that there's a lot of spitfire fans not just because of that but that helps people identify with the players uh houston also had uh heart stickers on stage and they just ran with it super well their attitude on stage was really lively even um walkouts i've seen some hate towards the walkouts people think they're too goofy and they don't really have a place but they also contribute to that idea of giving the players character so i in that sense i would say that they do matter especially florida there they would be a uh, just a second place or uh, second to last place team without their walkouts because of the walkouts they have character and people identify with them and they even have a good fan following just because of how approachable and how identifiable they are. Hopefully they can step up the actual performance, but the important part is that they have fans, and that's impressive. Of course, Overwatch League is by no means perfect. For starters, I want to talk about the stage playoffs versus overall playoffs. I think just calling it stage playoffs is what makes it so confusing. For those that don't know, after each stage, the top three teams basically compete in a small bracket. Uh, winner gets a hundred thousand. Second place gets, I think it was either twenty five k or fifty k. And while in theory that's good, that's something for the end of each stage players to strive for and teams to strive for. But they have no affecting. They have no effect on the actual standing, and that can confuse a lot of people. It has confused a lot of people. For starters, you need to make sure that's as clear as possible that stage playoffs have no effect on overall standings, and then. Just calling them stage playoffs makes it really confusing because when when the actual playoffs come around, like you can hear how confusing it is for me to just try and switch between the two. But when the actual league playoffs for season one come around, people are just going to think it's another stage playoffs, and that just can't happen. Puckett's breakdown that was thrown around all over the stream and in videos... It was a good start because it helps clarify what the teams are doing, but it was very focused around which teams are in this stage playoff. It wasn't actually trying to clarify what, what's, what a stage playoff is versus the regular playoff. So I think that needs to be worked on. There also needs to be more clarity on how maps are chosen in each stage. I know it's you have the choice between two maps per game mode, and I think they vote on it, I want to say, but... I don't even know, and I've watched pretty much every game of every series, but it, it is important because teams are starting to become better at certain maps. So you want to know what benef how they can achieve that benefit. Is there an actual voting or is it something different? Along with that, there was a huge worry that because you only see eight maps per stage that the content would be dry pretty quickly, but I think that the players did a good job being so good at those maps and showing so much creativity that it pretty much turned into a non-issue. The maps cycling is a good idea, but it can be weird going five weeks and not seeing King's Row. So I don't know if it is the best. It, I don't know if it is the best format. It's not ideal, but it worked well and five weeks realistically isn't that long. The casters and analysis is also by no means perfect. There are times with the casters especially where they'll mess up a play or misread something. They'll take either someone resetting as a sick play from another from the enemy team or they'll call out a mistake that wasn't actually a mistake from the team and that's the type of mistakes that really go away with more practice on stage at both casting and just being familiar with the game and how the pros play it versus how how a spectator watches it and trying to communicate that clearly on an on the analysis side of things there are I saw a lot of criticism over how we how our analysis desk 
uh, interacted with each other, basically. And finally, I would like to see more clarity on in between stages, more on player pickups. There was a lot of roster changes, roster trades, and just new players being picked up by the current 12 teams. And we haven't heard anything from Blizzard or Overwatch League. And it is the day before the stage announced is announced. And while we do see these announcements via Twitter and via like ESPN is usually the one that leaks these announcements, they aren't specifically announced via the Overwatch League, where I think they should be. Because if they just show up on stage, then a lot of people just will have no idea who these players are and what they bring to their new team. With all that being said, I do think Stage 1 was a huge success for the Overwatch League and for Blizzard as a whole. I do think the majority of people enjoyed it. Usually everyone has like one or two gripes with it, which they can improve on as time goes on. And as we see the season continue, I'm sure even more issues will come up. But Stage 1 as a whole has been largely successful and I can't wait to see more. That's going to do it for me today, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please feel free to leave any critiques either for me, my recordings, my first time doing a commentary in a long time, or even for the Overwatch League, let me know what your opinions are, what you think needs to be worked on. I would love to hear it out and maybe even discuss in the comments. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you guys later. Peace.